here on TV3. Now, does this sound familiar to you? You'll be experiencing a lot of turbulence. This week, you meet a stranger that will change your life. Or love is just around the corner. Just hold on. What am I talking about? Horoscopes. Star signs. Uh, are you somebody who picks up the newspaper and you go straight to where they tell you what you're supposed to go through? What's supposed to happen to you in your life because of your star sign? Whether Aries or Sagittarius or Taurus like myself. Is it all also just a bunch of nonsense as somebody else would say well we're going to be uh, delving into star signs and horoscopes and whether they actually do have any impact in our lives at all but before we do that uh, our reporter Lillian Taki has a little story for us take a look it might have made you nod in agreement or rolled your eyes and disbelieve it's likely you may have read your horoscope at least once in your lifetime for instance, certain forecasts like this will make you roll your eyes. Horoscope is a forecast of a person's future, often in reference to an astrologer's interpretation. This is usually based on the 12 zodiac signs. Many people throughout history have believed that the events of their lives were determined by or reflected in the movement of the stars and planets in the heavens. The thought that by studying the heavens at the time of a child's birth and throughout his life, his entire future, his social standing, occupation, material worth and so on could be accurately foretold. This pseudoscience formed a vital part of the cultures of the ancient Egyptians, Romans, Chinese and Native Americans, to name just a few. Some people consider it as madness, but did you ever consider in your reading whether those predictions made in the horoscope segment of the magazine you read were informed by facts? While some horoscopes seem to be talking to you, others seem far-fetched such that they are considered mischief. Oh, remember. What was the sound? Okay, so I have with me two guests that's going to help um, talk about this subject, of course, uh, horoscopes. First and foremost, she's a former uh, lecturer, Dr. Mimi Tabika. She's joining me. Good morning. Mm -hmm. And also I have with me um, Reverend Frederick McDavis from the Olive City Ministry. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm told I'm a Taurus, uh, and a Taurus is supposed to be, you know, the representation of that is, is a bull, so we're supposed to be quite stubborn. And we're supposed to be quite calm and, you know, a lot of uh, bulls tend to be quite lazy. And homes people. Now, the funny thing is, I remember when I, there was a time I used to be really into it. I'm not into it so much anymore. But at the time, I used to think that because that's what it says. Okay, I agreed with some of it. When it comes to horoscopes, is it mostly what is written you just accept? Or it's just a bunch of nonsense? <laughs> it isn't nonsense. It's not nonsense. No. no. Because look at you now. I've watched you several times on TV. Mm -hmm. And I could see that you are there. The bull is there. The bull. <laughs> okay. No, seriously. That's but at me. the same time, when you're not approached or touched, you're quiet. Mm. And all of it is what you just said yourself. Mm. Isn't that a fact? So would you then say the horoscopes are true? They Is are it? true. They it are is true. really interpreted properly. Okay. But this day, okay. okay. I wanted to ask you then, how does horoscopes work? The people who write whatever they write, how does it work? How do they even come up with it? You see, you have to study the astrology. And through that, it's, it's quite a long procedure. But I should say, it's a wisdom. It's a wisdom that if you have it, you can come up with anything. I can look at the gentleman standing there. Mm -hmm. I don't have to know his horoscope. And I can give you everything about him. Mm. And then later on, he tells me, oh, I'm a Gemini. Then you know that it is, that is what it is. When you said you were a Taurus, I wasn't surprised. Either <laughs> you're a Leo or a Taurus. Okay, because Leo's are supposed to be aggressive. That is the two that I thought you would be. And you came out to say that you were, you know, a tourist. And I tell you, it, it suits you. 
Okay. All right, I want to come to you, Reverend. Now, we know that horoscopes have been around for a very long time. Obviously, been around before the Bible, as far as we know. But there are some who would just say, it's just evil, or it's just superstition, in a different way. What do you say about that? Uh, I'd like to say a very big thank you for the opportunity first. And also, to begin from a strictly biblical point of view, Hosea 4, six for lack of knowledge, my people, people perish. perish. Now, if we are not able to establish the clear difference between what is true and what is truth, there is a lack of knowledge in a gap there. Because uh, things that occur are truthfully uh, unfolded. But as to whether it is true, I mean, in uh, juxtaposing it with the word of God becomes a whole question altogether. Horoscopes are true. Because true. like mm-hmm. my senior mom just said here, just by observing you, she could tell that your first allusion is very true. You are what you said you are. But from a strictly point of view, our lives are predicated and based on what God says we are or who we are. Um, when you take a study into the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy says quite clear, there are secret things that belong to God and there are those that are revealed which is ours. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, it actually opens our minds to the search for knowledge where the idea of what is a mystery is immediately thrown on board that we have to now begin to understand what mysteries are. There is a clear and a sharp difference between what is a mystery and what is mysticism. I will say from a confident platform that horoscopes are mysticisms, you know, mm-hmm. that which invites your thinking to feel that there is something beyond what the human intellect can grasp. And by either meditation, contemplation, or other means, you could have access to them. So, like I said, mm-hmm. it is the idea of the child of God exposing himself to what knowledge is. Because it is true, but as to whether it's the truth becomes the question. It's true, but as to whether it's the it truth, the truth. <laughs> okay, it becomes the question. All right, is it satanic? Um, I'd still like to uh, stay in the place of where the Bible says. Mm-hmm. Um, from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, when you read in Deuteronomy, um, I guess chapter 17 from verse 18 th- thereabout, it says that God says, I have delivered you from the land of Egypt. And now I'm taking you to a whole new place. In this new place, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want you to do this and that and that. And uh, among them is astrology, which is horoscope. So God says, I don't want you to indulge in it. Okay, God says that, but it doesn't mean that it's evil. From your point of view, is, is it evil? Some, a lot of people tend to say that it it's is. satanic and all oh, that. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. If God has given you the wisdom, if he didn't want to give you wisdom, why else would you have all the knowledge to say these things? Mm. Do you agree with me? Okay, I understand. Where you're you know, because from. as the pastor, you're a pastor, right? Yeah. As the pastor is saying, everybody has his own way of believing things. I'm not challenging God. No. I ask God for something. And if he has given me the privilege and the knowledge to find out what it is, that means God is not telling me the truth. I'm not coming to lie. It's what I have been given that I'm um, I'm actually spreading out. So it's just like, it's not something that I'm going in, doing it. But then I sit there. I've actually seen colorful stars falling. That, that, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm crazy. I've seen falling stars. I've, I've actually, I've written some In myself. so many things. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there are times that I go out and I'm sitting in my bed, you won't believe it. And something moves me and says, look, just go out. I go out and you see some stars actually shining mm. like a diamond. You know, I just make a wish and come back to my bedroom. Okay, somebody else will say that, ooh, that's witchcraft. Okay, we're almost out of time on this, but I need the to ask as well. Things, the witchcraft they are something else. It is. But you see, I, I think, do you think we understand it enough? I think that's because, that's, do we understand see, it enough? That's what because I Because people I started attribute by different saying, things to it. Exactly. Th- that's what I started by saying. Yeah. And to build on that, like we say as preachers, to go a little deeper, mm-hmm. I'll say that 
uh, if Hosea said that for lack of knowledge by people perish, perish. there is a lot more to it. Because oh, yeah. once you look at the subject of knowledge, you're looking at not just knowledge as it's thrown at you, but we have godly knowledge, we have worldly knowledge, knowledge, and then yes. we have human knowledge. Yes. Now, when God says, I hate it, it's godly knowledge. Okay. That is going to open up to you that because of this and that and that, I hate <laughs> it. Now, God created us as free moral agents, and we have the freedom to do everything we do. And I, it was Apostle Paul who wrote that all things are expedient but not all of them are acceptable you know. so for the things you uh, have at your disposal willingly you can expose yourself to them but what is God saying okay uh, out of time on this but lastly I realize astrology we see in the newspapers but it's not that big here compared to say what I've seen in Europe and you know no. in America and so forth do you see a gain in prominence in Ghana oh that is the problem because the pastors are coming out with all kinds of things. You mm. know, they have the oils and they have the whatnot and they have the whatnot that is exactly. doing this and that's going to move you and I don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. But astrology, mm -hmm. if we will really get there, it will take us some time. Okay. Do you see that game? I from think him? that the typical Ghanaian is, excuse my language, and I don't want to sound no, insulting no, to no, anybody. No. We are hypocrites. The Ghanaian will be doing it, but on the front he will say, oh, I don't like it, I don't do this. But nobody knows who, who does at the cover in their rooms. But then I'd like to leave us with two um, Well, you speeches. can't go till you get one. <laughs> okay. Um, like I said earlier on, the secret things belong to God. That's and right. if we, Now, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, everybody should know it as long as you're Christians. Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you didn't know of. There are a lot of things about myself I don't know of. Certainly, there are a lot of things about yourself you may not know of, but if you call upon him, he will show you the things that you need to help the progress of your life. All right. I want to say a big thank you to my two guests, first and foremost to uh, Dr. Mimi Tabika. She's a former lecturer, and also from Olive City Ministries, Reverend Fred McDavis.